thank you to the Friends of the Rowlett Public Library. I'm just so honored and happy to be here. This is the William Hoy story, and it's subtitled, How a Deaf Baseball Player Changed the Game. And if I can just tell you one more thing before I start about Jez Tuya, who did the illustrations. Je we were able to supply Jez Tuya with historical photos. And what he did was he took them and he made them kid friendly. So these, this is exactly what the uniforms looked like at this time. And what you'll see also, you baseball fans, no gloves. Because in the 19th century, baseball players didn't wear gloves. Details like that, you'll see that the umpires wore business suits because they were businessmen on their lunch break. They, that's, that's, that's how they dressed in those days. So everything's accurate, but just kid friendly, bright and cheery. Oh, and one more thing. William Hoy lived 99 years, born when Abraham Lincoln was president, died when JFK was president, threw out a ball in the World Series for the Cincinnati Reds when he was 99 years old. That man embodied a lot of history. The William Hoy story. William scooped dust to dry the sweat off his slick rubber ball. He stared at the small X he chalked on the barn wall. He closed his eyes. He opened them and threw. Bam! He hit the mark. He stepped back so he could try again. His mother waved her arms. She was applauding him. She touched her fingers to her mouth to signal eating. He read her lips as she said, dinner. William pulled out his pad and pencil. He scribbled, just a few more. I want to be perfect for tryouts. His mother nodded. His family was passing the mashed potatoes around the table when William pushed open the door. He read his father's lips telling him to wash up for dinner. He also read what his father's lips mouthed to his mother. Baseball, his father said, shaking his head. It will never last. Still, William couldn't wait to try out at his school, the Ohio State School for the Deaf. At tryouts, he threw the ball. He caught it. He batted. He waited. Too small, the team captain said. William never got much taller than five foot five. He couldn't do anything about that. But maybe they'd give him another chance if he aimed better and ran faster. So every day, after homework and chores, he practiced. One day, William was standing outside the cobbler shop where he fixed shoes, wistfully watching men play baseball in a far off field. A foul ball crashed by his feet. With his strong, sure arm, he threw the ball straight into an amazed player's waiting hand. Hey, kid, the player called. Want to join us? But William couldn't read the player's lips from where he was, so he turned back to work. The man ran to William and tapped his back to get his attention. William whirled around, and this time, when the man repeated the question, he understood. He scrambled happily to the outfield. William threw the ball smack into his teammates' hands. When he was up at bat, he sent it soaring where no one could catch it. What's your name? asked one of the players. William Hoy, William wrote. The man looked at the piece of paper a long time. He seemed to be thinking. Do you want to try out for our team, he asked William at last. William grinned. He sure did. <coughs> William soon learned life in the hearing world wasn't easy. Unlike his parents, few people used sign language in the 1880s, and certainly not in baseball. He won a spot on the first team he tried out for, but the manager smirked when he offered William less money than he paid the others. I quit, William told him with his notebook. He quickly found another team. But even on his new team, some players talked behind his back so he wouldn't know what they were saying. Others hid their mouths so he couldn't read their lips.
One day, a pitcher played the meanest trick of all. William let three pitches go by because he thought they were balls. He was too far to read the umpire's lips and didn't know they were actually strikes. He stood, gripping his bat, waiting for the next pitch. But the next pitch never came. William was confused. Suddenly, the pitcher burst out laughing. He pointed to the fans in the stands, laughing too. William's face grew hot. He walked off quickly. He wasn't going to cry. Not about baseball, he told himself. He jammed his hands in his pockets. Paper crunched against his fist. He pulled out a letter from his mother. He read again how much she missed him. William missed his family too. He remembered how his mother would raise her hands to applaud him. That's it. William pulled out his pad and drew pictures. He scribbled words next to the pictures. He wrote, he wrote, he wrote. He ran to find the umpire. The umpire read William's notes. Yes. That could work, he said. The next time William was at bat, the umpire raised his right hand for a strike and his left for a ball. He used American Sign Language symbols for safe and out. This time William got on base. He stole bases. He scored. In his first year in the majors, he led the National League in stolen bases. With his strong, sure arm, he became the first player to throw three base runners out at the plate in one game from the outfield. William taught his teammates signs so they could discuss plays without the other team hearing. They loved it. The fans enjoyed learning signs, too. In those days, before speakers and giant screens, hearing the umpire's calls from the back of the bleachers was hard to do. Now even the farthest member of the crowd could see the signals. Teams begged for William. He played for several before signing with the Cincinnati Reds near his family's farm. William was proud to show his parents that the boy who didn't make the school team was one of the most popular players in baseball. When William stepped up to the plate, shaking his bat over his shoulder, fans knew he'd hit or walk his way to first, then swiftly steal his way around the bases. Carefully watching the signals, he led the American League in walks in 1901. He was called the king of center field because for 10 years he was ranked among the top five outfielders to get hitters out by catching hard to reach fly balls. After William became a star, he thought nothing could surprise him. Then, one day, when he ran out onto the field, fans waved their arms from the stands just as his mother did when he was a boy. They waved hats, too. William said he'd never cry about baseball, but he did cry at the sight of deaf applause. All he'd wanted to do since he was a boy was find a way to play his favorite game. He never dreamed he'd change the way the game was played, but he did, and we still cheer him today. much. Thank you so much. One thing that I do everywhere I go is I've been fortunate enough to have a sign language interpreter and thank you Toby for being here for that. I also bring paper and markers because remember I told you how I believe that children can make all the difference? I sent this book to the National Baseball Hall of Fame but I didn't just send this book. I sent this book along with some drawings by children and their letters about why they think he should be in the Hall of Fame. And as a result of that, the Hall of Fame has asked me to come and give an author visit July 6th. 
when I go July 6th, we've got a couple months, I have a small stack of letters now. I want to give them an avalanche. Does everyone remember Miracle on 34th Street? <laughs> yes. Okay, remember that scene where uh, Fred's got to prove that Kris Kringle is the real Santa Claus and all of those letters get dumped on the judge's bench? Well, I want to be able to dump that many letters at the National Baseball Hall of Fame. I want to melt every heart there and make William, William Hoy, if inducted, would be the first deaf baseball player in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. This is not in the book, but in my research, because you have to be so careful with children's books that you have to keep the word count pretty low. Although I have in the back matter, for, for older children, you will see a timeline that starts 1862, ends in, in 1961. Also, he was not born deaf. He lost his hearing at age three from meningitis. So his parents could hear. He married a deaf woman and his children could hear. So he moved very easily between the deaf and the hearing worlds. But this was at a time when there was a lot of prejudice against deaf people. So the fact he could move easily had to do with coming from a loving family, but also finding a way to connect, connect with his loved ones on both sides, both the older generation and the younger generation. Um, but the funny story about the uniform was once he was out in the outfield, you know, he always carried his pad and paper in his pocket, in his shirt. And one day Paul came out and it fell right into his pocket. And the poor umpire didn't know whether to call the person safe or out. And they kept thinking about it. And the one thing they decided, well, no more pockets in uniforms. So William Hoy is also the reason we have no pockets in baseball shirts today. He also had a great sense of humor. I'll tell you this one. He went out with his team once to a really noisy hotel. Oh, there was a big party there. And they kept the, the players couldn't get a wink of sleep. Well, one player got sleep and the next day they're all bleary-eyed except for one very well-rested William Hoy who writes on his pad isn't it great to be deaf? <laughs> the original so the person who inspired me to write this is a deaf man named Steve Sandy who made has made it his life stream to get William Hoy into the Hall of Fame we started corresponding by email and the more he talked to me about communicated with me about William Hoy the more I became convinced, yes, he, this is such a great accomplishment. This is, this works, this is such an important story on so many levels because it's a story about someone who wouldn't give up on a dream, who persevered, who used his difference to make things better for everybody. And also, Steve Sandy educated me about prejudice against the deaf community and how important it was to the deaf community to have this deaf hero recognized. Um, I did a lot of research and with Steve's help he answered every question and I just felt that this was a wrong that needed to be righted. And Steve follows everything I do here. I am sure that once this link to this video is available he'll be posting this. He shares everything and it has just been so gratifying to feel that I am helping Steve and and the deaf community and building a bridge between the deaf and the hearing communities. Uh, that's become my dream too. His dream has become mine. Oh and he will be, Steve and his wife Bonnie who is also deaf will be flying to the National Baseball Hall of Fame from Ohio when I present the book on July 6th. I'm so pleased about that. Oh, and the final thing I'll say about my research, and I told you it took a couple of years. As a journalist, I always expect to find bad things along with good things. That's just human nature, right? A couple of years, I have yet to find a single bad thing or a bad word said about William Hoy. He was a good guy. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Oh, may I also say that he, so I told you that he married a deaf woman. She was raised in an orphanage. Her name is Anna, and she taught the deaf. 
and they loved her so much in the orphanage that even when she was a grown woman they didn't want her to, to let her go they said we want you to stay here forever with us we just love you so much so he had to ask permission from the people in the orphanage for her hand and he married her in the orphanage <laughs> <laughs> and they raised three wonderful children all college educated uh, the daughters became teachers the son uh, became a judge and when his sister d died he raised his nephew who ended up becoming a baker went also went to college became a baker but an extremely successful baker he baked bread for the Olympic athletes in Los Angeles and ended up supplying bread to the astronauts who took it to the moon so <laughs> one of his signs said the first bread on the moon <laughs> the Paul Hoy Helms bakery Thank you so much. This has just been a delight sharing the William Hoy story with you.